I'm running away from my responsibilities by going fishing. I have so many things that I have to do at home, but I'm stressed out. There's just piles and piles of stuff that I need to do, but I just don't want to do them. And so I'm running away by going fishing. So let's hope I actually catch some fish and have a good time today because I'm going to a spot that has not let me down ever. Let's go back and uh, get to it. Oh man, the fishing spot is right here. Oh, wow. The water is a lot lower than last year. Much, much lower. Holy crap. I could actually walk over there now. But this was the spot where I live streamed and caught like two suckers and like two bass and a catfish, I think. Yeah, I caught five fish that day. It was really good. All right, let's get things set up. Well, I have my bucket here that I'm just gonna sit on and uh, I'm gonna be casting out this way. I've got some worms with me. Very nice. <laughs> So far, this feels good. Uh, there's a nice breeze here. And there's no mosquitoes right now. All right, so I have my Carolina rig set up already. All I need to do is bait it and cast out. Okay. All right, just like that, we're good. Oh man, it feels like I snagged something. It doesn't feel like a fish. Is it a fish? I'm gonna reel in, let's see. It doesn't feel like a fish at all. It feels like I snagged like a rock or something. It's right here, it's not that far. Oh my God, are you serious? See, snagged a freaking stick. <laughs> Jeez, this would happen. Throw it up on shore. Don't need the stick in the water. The worm is still squirming around, so that's good. Let's try again. Hopefully I don't get snagged on a uh, stick again. There you go. Cast it out there. And I'm currently just using a normal octopus hook. It's not a circle hook, so I could be missing like fish also. Oh, I just have. Oh, yes, I think I got. Oh, just when I was talking about. Okay, I got a fish, I think. Pretty sure. Let's see. It's small. <laughs> yes. Yes. We've got ourselves some food. Oh, dang. That's bleeding like a ton. I caught it on its tongue or something like that. It should be good eating still. Grab some water. And I'll dump the water later when I leave. One fish on, we're good. Let's keep going. I'm actually wanting to target suckers, but uh, that's all right. I'll take smallmouth bass any day. See, so with this sort of hook, I need to be a little bit more conscious about like the nibbles and stuff and actually set the hook. If I don't do that, I'm not gonna catch any fish. I'm normally using a circle hook so all I need to do on a circle hook is just reel in and the fish will hook itself. With an octopus hook like this, I need to actually set the hook. So I have to like yank on the pole. But that was, that was a lot of fun. Like I, I felt the nibbles and I kind of timed it and I was conscious about it, got the hook set. I had to adjust my drag though. I want to stay longer because there's no mosquitoes and it's just nice out here but I want to catch some fish. So I'll give it another like 15 minutes maybe, maybe 30 minutes. And if I don't catch anything, I'll uh, probably have to leave. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Was just talking about it. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. We're good. Come on. Come on. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is a... Oh, yes. Got ourselves a catfish. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, perfect hook set, too. Look at that. Perfect hook set. See that? Oh, and it comes out easily, too. Look at that. It has a broken sort of fin right here. See, this one here is full and complete. This one's broken. Very, very nice. Got myself a channel cat. <laughs> okay. Put that in there. Okay. Not bad. I don't even need to rebait. Everything's good. Let's recast. That was nice. Just when I was talking about leaving, <laughs> I catch a frigging fish. But yeah, this is such a great place to have brought Raven. I didn't think that it was going to be so open like this. I didn't think the water level was going to be this low. If I had known, I would have brought Raven and there's no mosquitoes. So I could have just brought her Raven and she could have just been running back and forth through here, hanging out with me. And like a spot like this, you don't get a whole lot of people also. So it's nice. So I'll be able to bring Raven, have her off leash. She'll just run around back and forth and stuff. And I don't need to deal with people. Man, see, this would have been a lot of fun with Raven. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, this one feels like a big fish. Or it's just, it's fighting a whole lot more. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a big fish. It was just fighting a whole lot more. Oh boy. This is great. This is fantastic. It's slightly bigger than the other one, but these are perfect size eaters. Yeah, a perfect hook set too. Not sure if it's focusing, but yeah. Right there, the top lip there. Perfect hook set. Let's bring it back. This is very nice. So this has been a really successful fishing session. <laughs> but yeah, like I was saying, this would have been so much more exciting and fun if I had brought Raven. <laughs> I was contemplating it too, but yeah, I wasn't sure how the water level was gonna be. So when I hold it, I hold it right here like this. Oh, you can hear it, huh? So there's a bone and then there's like the soft spot. It's almost like a perfect holding spot. You just got to be aware of this fin right here so it doesn't poke you. But for the most part, holding it right here is the best spot. Just pinch right there. You will feel it. Like if you ever caught like a catfish, you will feel it. It's right here. It's like here are its ribs. And then there's this bone right here that comes up to this fin. But yeah, right where my thumb is. Perfect spot to hold. All right, there you go. In you go. I've actually been thinking of doing like a road trip up north or something with Raven and bring some fishing gear and stuff and see if I can catch some nice fish. But I don't really know where to go. And I want to do sort of like a camp out in my van also, you know, sort of like a camper thing. And I have recently cut out like these corrugated plastic. What I have done is I've cut it to the size of my windows, my rear windows. And so I'm able to actually pop them into the windows and black it all out. And so that way I would be able to get a little bit more privacy when I'm in my van in the back. And uh, I want to see if I can like cover things up a little bit more too. So that way I can like actually stay in the van with the lights on. And then from the outside, you wouldn't see any lights coming from the van. I want to get that done. That would be a lot of fun and be able to like hang out in the van with Raven and eat and cook and all of that and make a video even <clears throat> like cook some ooh, ooh, taps. Ooh, lost it. But yeah, going up north to like Mille Lacs Lake, I think, or there's a few campgrounds and stuff. There's these um, state forests that I can go to. There's no payment 
or no reservation that I need to do too. Uh, and that's really fun. Do I have a fish? Just had a small nibble, but nothing real. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, yes. Holy crap. I wasn't expecting another bass. Oh, oh, oh. Don't lose it now. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Jeez, bass are some fighters. Another smallmouth bass. Let's take it home and eat it. God, I am seriously just tempted to continue fishing constantly. Because look at that. So I had that nibble and I didn't think that I actually had a fish on because it wasn't putting up a fight at all. So, there you go, another cast. All right, so it's 7.25, got five minutes left. Heading home when it is 7.30. Or if I catch a fish before 7.30, I'll go home. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I can't believe it. Okay. Okay. All right. This one's a bit of a fighter. Okay, rod tip up, keep reeling. Keep... Oh, oh, it's it's spinning. It's a catfish. Oh yeah. Yo. Successful day. Very, very successful day. Oh, it, the, it was spinning because the line got caught on this here, on its fin. Perfect hook set too. There you go. Still have the worm too. Tempted to cast out again. <laughs> but I think we're good. It's uh, 7, 728. I've got two minutes to spare. Might as well head home now. We've got three small catfish, two small mouth bass. There you go. Perfect. You know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast out and then I'm going to clean up. Oh. There you go. I'm gonna run the drag super low. Turn the bucket around. Stick my rod in here like this. There you go. And so if I catch anything, the line will just pull out and I should be good. See, like this will stay. We're good. Yeah. All right. Actually, to make it even better, I got these bells. I'll pop it on the tip here, just like that. So if I get a fish, It'll start ringing like that. But yeah, let's just clean up to go home. <laughs> just gonna drink the water. <sighs> you good? Oh, see? There's some nibbles. He heard that, right? Oh, I'm just gonna let it take it because it's circle hook. So I'm just gonna let it take it. Oh, there you go, there you go. Nope, it hasn't taken it. Okay, let's take the bells off. Okay, I'm gonna reel in. Just gonna put my backpack on then. And I got to dump out the water. So, there we go. There you go. Three catfish and two bass. <laughs> Five fish. This is perfect. Like if I was on a loan, this would be a major success. But you wouldn't be fishing with a rod and reel like this on a loan. <laughs> See, there's still a piece of worm on it, but I'll just, just take it off now. 
That was perfect. That was a lot of fun. So this bucket is actually uh, gonna go on my backpack. I have this lanyard on the side. This is gonna hang like that. I'll just hold on to my hat and my rod. Time to go home and clean and cook the fish. <sighs> All right, this is gonna be a long trek back. All right, here is the van. So in goes the rod. Here's the fish. We're gonna dump it in the cooler there. Cooler was supposed to have ice in it, but I haven't caught any fish the past couple of days, so it's melted. <laughs> There you go. It should be good in there. And uh, I'm gonna go buy some ice and I'm gonna dump a ton of ice in here. <laughs> and let it sit on ice overnight and then I'll clean them tomorrow. All right, here's my catch. <laughs> so I've got the three catfish and the two smallmouth bass. I'm just gonna clean these and chop them up. And I'm gonna see if I can like smoke these or dry them out somehow. I'm going to salt them maybe, or just simply smoke them. I don't know exactly just yet but i want to imagine a scenario where i do catch something like this in the wilderness and i need to survive on all of this i wouldn't eat all of this in one sitting right so i want to process this but then figure out what i can do with it to kind of keep it longer and so that's what i'm going to try to do I think I've said this in a different video already, but I'm going to say it again. Like even after all this time of me just cleaning fish and stuff and looking at their guts, it's been about like five, five years or so since I started catching fish and stuff like that and fishing. And I've still yet to get used to all of this. Like I am still somewhat squeamish when it comes to like gutting these fish. It's still really, really gross to like open them up and gut them and pull their guts out and see all the blood and, and guts. And I don't know if I'm ever going to get used to it. <laughs> like it's gotten easier throughout the years, you know, doing this, but it hasn't, but my feelings towards it has remained the same. <laughs> So catfish like this, you've seen my other videos on how to clean them already probably. Uh, what I usually do is I pour boiling water on their skin and scrape everything to get all the black film or whatever this is on the fish off, uh, or catfish. And then, uh, so that way it'll look sort of like a bright gray or white color. That'll mean that it's clean and good to eat. Because if you keep all this black stuff on, it'll end up being sort of like bitter when you eat it. And I like to eat the skin. And in a survival situation, you would want to eat the skin anyways, because that is where all the fats and oils are in a fish. That will provide you with additional calories to survive. As far as anything inside of the fish, you can eat the eggs or the sperm. You can also eat the gills, the kidney, the heart, and I think the liver also you can eat, as well as the, the bladder or whatever. I keep forgetting what it's called. It controls the, the buoyancy. It's this thing here, the air bladder, I think is what it was called. So you can eat that as well. The brain and the eyeballs are good to eat as well. The brain is exceptional because of the, all of the fat that's in it. Well, not that it's in it. The brain is pretty much just pure fat. That's basically what it is. All right, so I'm going to be a bit transparent here in this video. These fish have been on ice for a few days and uh, they smell fine and I'm sure they're like edible still and I am going to still use these and eat them, but they have been sitting in the cooler uh, under ice for a while now and it seems and it appears that they have begun to go bad but because they've been on ice, uh, th I'm pretty positive they're fine to eat. But just to be on the safe side, what I plan on doing with these would be salting them and then smoking them. And so I'll be using this charcoal grill and uh, I'll figure out a way to smoke them. And so I'll get a fire going, maybe a tripod over them and then get these to open up a little bit more. I'm gonna cut it down the middle and open them up and then I'll uh, smoke all of these fish. I think the bass though is in a lot worse condition. They seem like they're be, they'll be okay, 
but like the meat has begun to go mushy. And so in order to not like waste these, I'm going to chop these up and then mix them up in my uh, compost pile. And then I'm gonna use this in my garden. Hopefully it'll provide enough nutrients for my tomatoes and my plants to grow. So this is not gonna go to waste. And the reason why it's taken me so long to actually like process these is it's just a pain in the butt. Like it's not fun processing fish. When I go fishing, it's a lot of fun, you know, and it's nice to get food. But the thing that sucks about getting this food is the fact that you have to process it. You have to clean it and everything. And it's just a pain in the butt to do <laughs> because we live in a world where everything is convenient. You know, you can go to the grocery store and buy food um, that's already prepared for the most part. Or you can even go to like a fast food restaurant where the food is completely uh, prepared and then all you need to do is buy it and then just eat it right away. And you literally have the ability to eat it in your vehicle. Um, so yeah, we live in such a world that is incredibly convenient. And I am a part of that. Like I grew up a part of that. I'm not the type of person that grew up having to do this because there are people out there where even now their only means of food is to go and catch their own food or to hunt their own food or raise their own food. And then they have to butcher and process everything. Like that's what they have to do in order to put food on the table. And it's a lot of work. And so a lot of the times I take for granted the grocery store but I want to be more self-reliant. So this is going to be something that I'll have to get used to, understand and get better at. So the catfish being on ice for like three, four, five days here, all of the slime has kind of broken apart and there's no slime on here when I pulled this out. All this black film that's on the fish, I can easily scrape it off like this. And I'm not even using boiling water. And normally you would see me use boiling water. So this is also a nice experience. We will see how uh, good this fish still tastes or if it's good at all. Like right now, to me, it looks fine. Like it's a little, it's begun to feel a little softer than it should where the belly is. But for the most part, the meat on the rest of its body and tail and everything feels fine. So here's what I want to do with the catfish. I am just going to slice down like this. Bear with me because this is not something I do on a normal basis. So we'll see how well this works. <laughs> this is first time. There you go. So I feel like I need to cut this a little bit more so like right through the rib cage but i'm not sure if my knife will go through or if i should cut like to the side of the rib cage <laughs> or if i can just break it like this cutting to the side of it there so that actually looks pretty good it doesn't look as nice as like what i've seen before oh maybe what they do is they f they cut out the the bones maybe that's what they do so then do i go like this then oh i think that's what they do Ooh, the first time for everything <laughs> all right probably isn't like the best, but it worked. So let's imagine if I was just in the woods, I would do something like this kind of, right? Um, I would remove the fish bone or the spine here. This will be saved for like a broth. So I'll pop this into like a container and cook it down. There's more bones on here, but that's fine. I'll keep it. And so essentially something like this here will be smoked. So I'll grab like a stick or something, or I'm not really sure, but I'll do something to keep it open like this and I'll uh, smoke this. Yeah, something like that. So I think this is how I should do it. Let's try. 
try this then. So I'm going to go from the tail. Go like that. And then on this side, I know people typically fillet the other direction, but <laughs> I'm just testing things out. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working very well. All right, but I was able to get this much of it though, which is nice. There you go. Yeah, this one actually looks a lot better. It's, it's not stuck together, you know, like the other one, but it is filleted. And then this will be thrown into a pot. So let's try it this way. Mm. Mm. That's okay. This seems like it works too. This is definitely not the type of knife that you would be using to flay a fish. They actually didn't turn out as bad. All right, one, two, three catfish ready to be salted and smoked. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, this is coarse sea salt. I actually wouldn't recommend using coarse sea salt. I would recommend using just standard like table salt, but without the iodine. So if you can get that, use that. But this is all I've got at the moment. So this is what I'm using. So. Just salt it, give it a nice layer on one side like this, and do that on this side. And I'm just gonna do it right on top. There you go. I understand that if you were in like a survival scenario, you wouldn't really have salt to work with. In that case, you would probably just smoke it right away. But right now, I am gonna salt it like this and I'm gonna let it soak in for about a day or so. And then I'm gonna wash everything off and then I'm going to smoke it. So I will see you guys tomorrow. So it's been a whole season, about three or four months since you saw that last clip. And I've even cut my hair already. <laughs> Look at that. So I will not be eating these today. I'm j I just don't have a whole lot of time uh, because right now I'm in the process of trying to like prepare for a vid summit that I'm going to be attending in like a week. But these are the catfish and uh, I salted them and then I washed all the salt away maybe about two, three days afterwards. And then I just set it out on a rack to dry in my fridge. And over time, it just became really hard and it's leathery right now. And it smells fine. It kind of smells like a fridge, but for the most part, this has been preserved in the fridge. It's, it's just salted fish. This is just dry salted fish. And all you need to do at this point would be to just put it over a grill and roast them. And uh, it'll be really, really salty, but it'll be edible, it's protein, and this will keep you alive in a survival situation. Or if you wanna make this a little bit better, what you would do is you would actually cut these into pieces and then throw it into like a pot of water with like a pinch of salt. And I don't know how the, like the science works around this, but my mom, she tells me that in order to make like dried salted fish like this less salty is to put it in boiling water with some salt. The salt that's already in the water, she says apparently it draws out the salt in the meat and then it goes into the water. It might be an osmosis thing, 
I don't know, but it works, I guess. And so, uh, yeah, if you want to make these less salty, just boil them in some water with a pinch of salt. And then from there, you can then roast it or cook it in any other way that you want, uh, how you normally would just pieces of fish. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video so that I can end the video on a proper note, opposed to just cutting it off or something. And I wanted to show you the result. So like, it looks really good. Everything looks good, no mold, nothing wrong with it. I also, have this. <laughs> Look at that. This is a smallmouth bass. Uh, there you go. And this is edible too. And all you need to do, <laughs> there you go, I just broke it open there. And all you need to do is just roast this over a fire also and just cook it. Uh, you can rehydrate this also and then cook it. Uh, would probably be the best way to do it. This is very similar to what you can buy at the grocery store as far as like salted dried fish. Uh, there's other types of fish that preserve a lot better and taste better also. Uh, I think there's one called like a croaker or something like that. Um, and um, you can find it at like Korean grocery stores. And I plan on buying some to make a video out of it. but. It looks almost identical to this even. Like, look at that. That's so cool. But yeah, this is something that will just be able to just hang up in like a shed or something. It'll stay dry and it'll be bug free for the most part because like cooler weather like this, you know, in the fall, uh, something like this will last uh, up until winter and even spring even. But yeah, this is, an old method of preserving food. Yeah, but that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed re-watching like the fishing section of this video. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Otherwise, uh, catch me at uh, Vid Summit 2023. It's uh, Vid Summit's 10th annual and uh, they're doing it in Dallas, Texas this year. And so I'll be there. And uh, if you're in Dallas, Texas, come say hi. Uh, if you're at Vid Summit. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video, all right? <laughs> Peace out.